Welcome to my shop. My name is Steve. In this video, I'm going to be upgrading an old friend, the Fritz and Franz jig. Okay, so for my new Fritz and Franz jig, I wanted to clamp this to the sliding table, basically in this position, without the squaring support of the fence. I didn't want to have to move the fence back, so I, I purchased some T-slot nuts that fits the groove in my slider. Uh, I purchased that from McMaster Carr. And for the bottom of the jig, I used uh, HDPE instead of the hardwood runner. Uh, the hardwood, I used oak before. It's held up fine. I, it's as tight now as it was the day I built it. Uh, but the HDPE, I wanted to split this in the middle. The, the wood I would glue in, this I just screwed in. So this is replaceable. If this doesn't hold up well, I can either replace it or go back and even glue in hardwood. But I left a gap here, drilled a hole such that I can locate that uh, T-slot nut. And I used, uh, these are called adjustable lever handles. I call them kip levers. Uh, but I can, I can clamp this in position anywhere along my sliding table. So, and that's not going anywhere. I made, took great care to make this square. The aluminum extrusion, instead of using T-tracks, because I wanted an adjustable fence face that's replaceable and one that I can stick a scale to the top of and calibrate it, that's why I went with this option. So if I, I, if I could use T-Track, I, I would have applied, milled a groove in the top, put a T-Track in, and the milled one in the face. But to be honest with you, the price of 8020 aluminum, I bought one of these, uh, these and, and, and another one too that's even wider for less money than a typical T-Track cost. So, and this was, I made this 24 inches long. I had them cut to order from 8020. The replaceable fence, you'll see a bunch of holes in there. I only use three of them. And I just use a, used a flathead screw countersunk and used a T-nut on the back. This is a piece of oak. This is a piece of uh, the 18 millimeter um, Baltic birch ply, which I had to sand down because it was too thick to allow this, this flip stop to go over because it would sit just proud like that. It wouldn't go all the way over. So I sanded this down from 18 millimeters to 17 millimeters and that worked fine for my application. I used the 2550 aluminum extrusion and for both of these I ended up milling a rabbit out so that the flip stop would go all the way to the bottom. I don't remember exactly what that was. It looks like about, I don't know, six, six or seven millimeters deep. And then I attached the fence using T-slot nuts. And I, I went overkill on it probably just because I had them. But I also used HDPE for the runner. Installed my handle at an angle with counterboard uh, button head screws. And for this material, I'm going to be using oak for the rear fence. Put that in place. Okay, one of the things I wanted to address is because I do make quite a few boxes, bow front jewelry chest, whatever, uh, I, I would often put a piece of hardwood scrap behind my workpiece material to minimize tear out as the blade exits the, uh, the material. One thing that since I made this fence adjustable, I can push it out further and have a built-in chip breaker out here. That's one advantage I saw to that. Another thing when, I'm, when I have a cutoff that falls off the end, I'd often have the windage from the blade and the, and the dust collection 
push the piece back in front of the blade, this will actually enable me to push the piece through the blade so I won't have that problem anymore uh, with the, uh, you know, I've, sometimes I've actually had to stop the saw and move stuff out of the way, flick it out of the way, depending upon where the material was. But that's one of the things I've, I wanted to address with this. And uh, now I'll tighten this. Because of the construction of this jig, having to mill rabbits on both ends, possible bowing of the aluminum extrusions, and just slop in the holes for uh, mounting these, you could easily get this thing out of whack. So pay a great deal of attention and care. And what I like to do is, as I go through the process, use feeler gauges and make sure that my, my fence is tight. I know that my plywood's square and um, I need to make sure that any variations in fence thickness and whatever don't adversely affect that. As far as the flip stop goes, one of the things I wanted to do was add a micro adjust. So I purchased this Woodhaven micro adjust and flip stop. I had to to mill this button down on both sides. Actually, I tried it on one side, but what was happening is the thread would get too close as you tighten the knob, the, the whole mechanism would move on you. So I ended up going back and, and cutting out uh, an equal amount on the opposite side to get this centered. I did that on the router table and uh, with a clamp mechanism. So you'll see that in the video. I also replaced these knobs with uh, longer knobs such that it would uh, work with this uh, T-nut. T track now. Should. Just a little snug. Let's try another one. You want this to move smoothly, so I need to uh, recut this one, I think.
So that's my new Fritz and Franz jig. Now what I want to do is install some scales. And I will install a scale on this fence and this one. This is a metallic tape. It's uh, made by Craig. It comes in three and a half meter lengths, so, and I needed 600 millimeters. And it's important to not get this too far out. So I'm just going to, I've got about a quarter of an inch or so from the um, end of the ply, and I'll just eyeball this and kind of stick it to the, um, probably need to pull it back toward me a little more. Okay, now I've got a stay at scale stuck down to my fence. It is possible to reuse these scales, particularly the metallic ones. I've got one that's plastic here. I don't like the indicators as much, but uh, I'll leave links to both of these. And what I'm going to do is basically cut, set this stop to where I cut some off. And I'm going to measure the length of this and then adjust the fence such that it matches the length of, of the workpiece that I have left. So. And at this point, you do not want to move that stop. thing I want to do is check for square. I'll check this up against a light and I see no light. So the square is good. I am one forty one point two. Now my scale right now reads 138 point something. So now what I want to do is loosen my fence. And I'll keep some tension on this. And I want to move this to 141, where the scale reads 141. And I'm, I don't know, I'm, I'm not going to be able to get 0.2, but I'll just go a shade over 141. Tighten the fence down. I'll repeat this cut. Now I'm going to position this to where I can get, uh, just use the micro adjust. Position this to where the stop is right at 140. I'm just going to try to split the line, tighten it up, and we'll repeat this. So I set this to 140. Let's see where I am. Uh, 
I'm 140.05, so I don't think I'm going to get it any closer than that by eye. So this is calibrated, and I think what I'm going to do is do the same thing with the opposite side and uh, apply this plastic scale to that. And on that one, I can actually let the scale overhang. So I think that about wraps up this video on my updated Fritz and Franz jig. It's resolved some of the issues I had with my older jig. I brought this forward to where I don't have to lean over the outrigger table. I didn't necessarily need it to be longer. In retrospect, I wished I'd made it roughly 18 inches wide as opposed to the 24 inches that it is. It just kind of hangs over a bit too much to suit me. But the reason I did it was to give me enough length to cut yet still have a micro adjust on my uh, flip stop. I had also originally intended on getting a digital readout and clamping it to this uh, rear T-track and then attaching it here to give me more accurate cuts. But honestly, as accurate as I can get this, uh, get this scale and get it to within a tenth of a millimeter, which I was able to do at least based on the graduations of the scale, I'm, um, I'll be happy with that. I do like the metallic tape better than the plastic tape, but you can actually cut through the plastic tape and not damage your, your saw blade. So anyway, that, that's it for the Fritz and Franz jig. I thank you for watching. Have a great day.